Welcome to the Brand Identity Design Podcast. My name is Jason. I'm your host. I'm a designer. And we are broadcasting live on LinkedIn and on Clubhouse simultaneously. And today, we are going to be speaking about viral content. I want to thank all my listeners listening to us live on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, uh, any audio-based broadcasting platforms like Spotify, Google, or Apple. Thank you so much for your consistent love, love and support. Uh, I like to welcome uh, Alicia to the part to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for being a part of the show. Uh, it's a really exciting topic which we are going to be discussing on. It's called as the creation of viral content. And for Alicia, let's have some sound effects and let me welcome her to my podcast. Here, there you go. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you uh, for the invitation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So nice to have you. And during this episode, uh, Alicia would speak about how viral marketing spreads quickly from one person to a person uh, to another person. It's like a virus. Uh, the user becomes brand amb ambassador and it creates a lot of attention, engagement, brand awareness in return of minimal budget. So, you know, join this discussion. If you're on LinkedIn, I would greatly appreciate if you can share this space, uh, you know, to some of your friends, invite a few people to join. And if you're on Clubhouse also, I would recommend you to do the same thing. So, Alicia, welcome, uh, you know, to this uh, conversation. So let me actually give you guys a quick heads up on who Alicia is. I actually found her on LinkedIn while I was browsing through uh, some of the things you know which people really work on uh, there is something uh, which alicia is really working on uh, through her company which i really found fascinating which we would we would be discussing towards the end of this conversation so alicia has over 27 years as a serial entrepreneur and guys, if you don't know what is a serial entrepreneur, these are those entrepreneurs who just don't have one business, but they have many and they try to cumulatively, uh, collectively work as a team and build a big empire. So she's been working with consumer goods, health, technology, beauty products over her career. And uh, she has key to her key to branding success is an emphasis on viral marketing and segmented messaging, which allow brands to communicate in prospects vernacular. She has three products. Uh, she has worked on and has won uh, CES three years in a row. CES is actually a Tech Innovation Awards, just in case if you don't know. Uh, she has also been able to build one multi-billion dollar company due to explosive growth uh, in the first year of 1.3 million and wealth. And she has a, a wealth of experience when it comes to taking risk. So thank you, Alicia, uh, for being here. I hope <laughs> that introduction... I know it's it's not too much, but you know I think it does give people an overview of who you are. So let's actually deep dive into you know my first question. Now most people, I mean entrepreneurs, just myself also, I find it challenging just to manage and operate one business. Now in your case, you're a serial entrepreneur, and you have multiple businesses. So I want to understand, like you know, where did this inspiration come from? How are you able to manage everything? Take that much amount of risk, manage multiple businesses. Uh, is there is there someone in your family who kind of inspired you to you know make this happen? I, no, I just want to actually hear that side of your story though. Yes, I um, I actually um came to in a in a family that um has a corporate background. So my family owned a, a landfill, hauling company, excavating company. And so I was raised into um, more of a business mindset. Now, my father was uh, more on the sales, the corporate sales avenue. And he was very, very good at what he did. Um, and as being learning from someone who's like more of like the, the master salesperson, right? And understanding that, you know, relationships aren't about the sale for right now. Relationships are about maintaining a good respect with someone so that you can make many sales over the years. And understanding that I has always been key uh, to what I've done uh, through my time and, you know, some of the products that I've chosen to represent and things of that nature. Um, 
a lot of that had to be, was basically about establishing the relationship, understanding that these are long-term relationships and understanding once you have, you know, your ICP in your wheelhouse, you're no longer building products for a blind audience. You're building products for your ICP. And I think, you know, that kind of training and information is basically what I got from my dad and, you know, some shortcuts and really, you know, um, addressing people and understanding how to get, um, and, you know, to a level of integrity, um, and understanding how much re reputation matters in the long scale. That makes sense. Alicia, I appreciate you sharing that uh, backstory about your background, how your family influenced you to get into the entrepreneurial game. Uh, could you, would you mind telling me what is ICP? I just want to make sure I get it right. I am understanding, um, my understanding is Oh, I customer. apologize. ICP is your ideal client profile. Oh, that's what I guess. So, oh, nice. yeah. So we will get into a little bit more into that later, but definitely hold that terminology um, because that's very important, especially when we're talking about viral content. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's actually get into, uh, you know, a little bit more about being a serial entrepreneur. I want to really understand what is your secret sauce? How are you able to run and manage multiple businesses? I have no idea how many are you running at this moment of time? Would you mind? Right now we have three different brands we're running. Um, and three different, of course, different focuses, um, for the companies. Now, how I do things is like this. I absolutely a hundred percent believe in automation and AI. I, absolutely believe in programs that help scale businesses. And so what I do is I invest in software that will take, you know, the place of human, human actual bodies. Um, and that helps me a lot with being able to run multiple different, um, companies at the same time, different brands, you know, even taking some consulting positions on the side as well, you know, the whole thing. Okay, that makes sense. So automation and AI, and and you said uh, investing in software so that, you know, you have collective data uh, of multiple ventures on the progress which you're making. So, I mean, you're not saying that human intervention is not required. Human intervention is there, but any mundane tasks, repetitive tasks which are there, you try to automate that uh, through software. Am I right? Absolutely. And I think that there's another, there's a lot, like for instance, like in the beginning, really that's, you know, I would have to say that 90% of your work is set up in development. Um, you know, and that's just because you're, you know, this is the world we live in. You know, I can't compete if my competition has marketing automation that's working all the time and I don't. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a cost that they're not having to absorb that I do in the, in the more expensive, you know, human content, uh, things that nature. Um, so for me, you know, look, it's very important to invest in the right technology and the right process. And what I mean by that is if there's a process that might skyrocket sales right now, okay, but they plateau at a certain point and in addition, the cost keeps going up. All right. I would rather invest my time in something that's a slower roll in the beginning. But once I get into, you know, full um, development or I would say full saturation um, with the messaging, if that actually stays there and I don't have to put any more money in there, it's actually kind of locked in there, kind of owns that, got that. Um, I'm going to do that. That's 
kind of how I I look at investment and I look at the the way in which I manage companies because investing in the right technology is very important and you can't find the right technology if you don't take the sales call. That's that's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You so have much. to be open-minded. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm with you in a slow but steady, but invest in those resources which help you to automate a lot of things, less amount of work, uh, and over time is just going to be more beneficial and profitable. Let's actually get into the juicy side of this conversation. And I think that's why people are waiting here for. So in in in, in a simple, uh, you know, in a, in a simple way, could you explain us what is a viral content and why creating a viral content is such an important uh, marketing strategy? Okay. So let's get into viral content. Viral content means different things for different people. Okay. Um, let me explain. So if I'm a doctor who lives in Jacksonville, Florida, Okay. And I don't travel. I work Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Those are my hours and that keeps my marriage and that's the way I do it. Okay. Having a, a, a video that they do that goes to 5 million people does them exactly what if those 5 million people are in California? So viral content in the way that I discuss viral content is about viral content for your targeted buying audience. Okay. Everyone has their own targeted buying audience number. So say for instance, you know, that particular guy, he can do, um, he can do 2 million people in in his area in his city okay that's 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 who he can market to he can only handle about you know let's say he can handle 300 400 maybe they're once a year type of things you know what i mean um you have to look at okay so how many can he handle how much does he want to do, do you know if it goes bigger does he want to and does he want to expand or does he not? These are all questions that you have to find out from your client right ahead, right away. Um, because viral can be viral. Viral can be like an inundation of, of stuff, but it's not, if it's not the targeted audience, who wants to, you know, who wants to talk to people who are just, you know, saying that's great content, you know, that's cool, you know, but that's not, if that's not going to elicit a sale, what's the point? So the first thing about viral content is understanding that you're going, you want to be viral in, in front of your targeted buying audience. And to do that, you also want to understand that you want a percentage of that audience. So if that, continue, if that whole audience is, say, 100,000 people, then you want a measurable number to respond and that is what makes your content viral so if you have a hundred thousand people and you've gotten uh sixty thousand impressions um and you've gotten maybe yeah let's say that you got um you got a couple checkbacks and then you also then had so many you would get sales from that you understand um, so these are the type, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying, when we say viral content, we're making content that appeals to your targeted body and audience. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, see my um, understanding with viral content, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to cut you back there. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, I know it's kind of hard to pull off. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it in the first place. Right. So are you, are you saying that, you know, uh, you're saying it with the assumption that, you know, any content which you are able to pull off can get viral. So is there a process to make it viral? Like, you know? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's yes, hear. there is a process. 
And one of the reasons why I was talking about the targeted buying audiences is because we serve mostly businesses and entrepreneurs, you know, within manufacturing and e-commerce arenas. And so they're looking for market share. They're looking for a certain piece so they know where they fit in the puzzle of the industry. So when we're doing that, we want to, um, we need to appeal, right? In three ways, we can either make it entertainment. Okay. Um, and this content would not be entertaining. Like my, like commercials. When you think of like in the eighties, when people were making funny stuff and then they had the, you know, the product placement in the commercial type of thing. No, none of that. Um, viral content needs to be wholly entertainment by itself for the targeted buying audience. So it's not to, um, it's not to yield so much of a sale, but an inclusion inside your ecosystem. So when you provide them with funny entertainment, um, something that they would do like, uh, um, kind of like office jokes, things that nature, um, that appeal directly to that particular audience. They lock you in as a place in which they can go to for that type of material. So they can kind of get out of their heads. Mm -hmm. Viral. Then the other thing is, is that, um, when that type of funny stuff happens, um, TikTok has a wonderful, um, world and TikTok will allow them to use that same sound that you used. That kind of sounded funny. And then everyone can mimic your sounds. And at that point in time, you're starting to garner your targeted buying audience in droves because the original sounds tend to go off and then other people use them because it relates to their, their material so that they can give it added dance ability. It works all the way around. Um, and that is how things start to get, um, to get legs. Another thing about viral content is that there is a, uh, bit of a misconception in the thought in the idea that someone releases viral content and that first time it's released is viral. <laughs> um, that's a misconception. Sometimes viral content, um, goes by, uh, basically you, you, you test it, you have an AB testing and you might release it with this caption set, or you might release it with this caption set. Um, you know, you change up your hashtags, change up your, um, categories, area of focus, some wording, things of that nature. I have upwards of five to six different choices for content that goes out to see which, which, um, way is more effective, which drives more traffic, that sort of thing. Um, and that does affect sometimes, um, the viral nature, a lot to do with the, you know, hashtags tend to bring in different audiences. Um, so if you're sometimes, you know, just that one hashtag, they you probably were like, ah, I was trying this one out, didn't really know about it. And it brought in the kind of audience that really that particular viral content appealed to. So, um, I put that in the system. That's one of the, you know, techniques that we use over here, um, to kind of, you know, make sure that the content will, um, uh, do the numbers that we're expecting. Makes sense. I'm, I'm with you on that. So, uh, so the the pros and cons which I see here from what what you're sharing is that a viral content is gonna offer a big reach. It's also gonna help uh, your business to scale faster, grow faster, so exponential growth. 
okay and because uh, it's amplified you would not have to reinvest a lot over the course of time to remarket it again and again it just spreads uh, absolutely the downside which i i feel and and you you can correct me you know if i'm if I, if 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 it's not accurate i think the downside is that it's also possible that people can uh, negatively approach uh, the viral content uh maybe bad absolutely yeah you know maybe say something uh you know which is not what we are trying to push forward uh it it is also possible that you know it's hard to measure like you know where exactly you know is this flow of audience really coming from maybe you can measure to some extent but you know uh, there's no guarantee that you know that is the only spot it's arriving from and uh, it's also possible that you know it can it can be on the top uh, for a long time and then it can go down like you know maybe people will s- slowly gradually lose interest to give you an example like uh, i remember the squid games uh, when it started off a few months back so it was really uh, getting viral people were making marketing campaigns around this stuff like that now i don't see it like it's gone like nobody's speaking about it now it's not the shiny object so it stays but <laughs> no that yes there are a lot of um i would say i would have to agree um fad things though i would still probably buy something that had a squid games logo on it <laughs> just because i thought that was such <laughs> great content um what i would all say is this i think that one of the things where where people where you talk about the negative aspect This is very itchy area because a lot of the stuff that goes viral is either going to make a lot of people mad or make them happy. It's like you just don't know. Like this is either going to be like a brand killer or a brand winner. You just <laughs> um and that's because a lot when you're making content um for a particular audience, you really are really trying to get into that relatable um emotional content um the trifecta of entertainment relatability and emotional content for um really creates drives of um business uh just because so many people on a large scale to can relate to it um especially when you're you're pointing out pain points and areas of frustration um that tends to uh do better um than other pieces. Uh the other thing to understand about uh viral content is that like I said it's really about mixing up the the hashtag focus but also doing that within the content itself. Sometimes um you can whether it's video based we do a lot of video based work here um and with video based we have like there's a timing schedule um that you have to have certain things going off like the first 5 seconds something has to happen this is like you know 10 seconds you know after that you have to have more of like a wave going on so there's there's certain um there's like a a formula um for the area of interest and that's nice for a regular um ad but with viral a lot of times it needs to be like um shattering almost if if that makes sense to you um and it really has to be like a jump like something that it connects emotionally deep um so we try to look for issues um and topics that relate to the targeted by an audience but really more in the level of frustration points um you know there's a lot of frustration within supply chain across the board um of any industry so it's really kind of easy to pinpoint certain areas of opportunity that you know manufacturers e-commerce across the world um are frustrated with right now <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so in that space it's very easy to you know provide those type of um videos um that type of content that is um 
appealing. Yet mm -hmm. the other thing to understand about viral content is viral content shouldn't be limited to be thought about just in social media. Um, you display viral content through your email campaigns, your website, this, that. The, so there should be always multiple areas of opportunity that they see the content. Um, mm -hmm. So that, it, it, yeah, go ahead. J just so that they have like your nine presses, you know what I mean? Um, they always say that, you know, a, a good frame of reference is nine points that a person sees you before they'll actually click that button or do the next action that pretty much guarantee after nine points of seeing, they'll, they're going to do something. Um, I look at that in regards to a lot of the analytics that we do um, when it comes to viral content and some other things. I like that. I like that. I want to actually deep dive into this a bit more because, I mean, honestly speaking, uh, in a take any business owner in today's world, uh, if they have to approach marketing in that sense, I mean, majority of marketers or they, you know, they would broadcast uh, themselves or position themselves you know highlighting the pain points like what you said so i want the audience to understand what is the actual difference in what you do to make it viral and what they are doing which is not making it viral so let's actually discuss about the anatomy of a, a viral social media campaign let's focus specifically on social media campaign could you help us understand what would be a typical structure of a viral social media post in comparison to a traditional post. So in this way, I think our audience would be able to, you know, understand the difference and the gaps. Okay, great. So one of the big key differences is on the viral side, we don't use paid advertising. So that's a, at least I, I cannot speak for all um, viral agencies. Not everyone um, agrees to that. Uh, our, our agency, we do not. And the reason why is because we like to benchmark um, the brand without paid advertising so we know where they need it. <laughs> um, so that's a big, if, if we're going to use paid advertising, but generally speaking, we don't really um, build those type of campaigns. Um that's not an area of focus for us. We do have partners who do um, that type of work for us if needed for our clients. Um, but for us, we build um, viral campaigns based off the idea that instead of taking the money that we would use for paid advertising, we invest that in the time it takes to do proper SEO and SEO research to make things viral. And that is um, really the difference. We really research what the targeted buying audience likes, their, um, the things they enjoy, things that nature, and then really kind of go after that um, in a content strategy to appeal to that audience for um, uh, basically so they come into the ecosystem. Once they're in the ecosystem from the viral content, that is when we every so often throw out pieces of, you know, advertising and things of that nature. But we do not do that in the viral content. The viral content, the piece itself is its own piece. It's its own, um, it's its own messaging. And the messaging might be, you know, something that's absolutely hysterical. That's pretty much where we're going for if we're going to make it, you know, entertainment based. If it's going to be relatable, it's going to be a pain point. Um, and if we're looking for a, I would say, more of a mass audience or more of a B to C approach, we are going to try to use um, and a triple approach, which would be something that is funny, something that's relatable, 
and something that um, really solves the um, solve is like a, a, a innovative um, innovative new cutting edge interest type um, approach whether it's an idea um, base um, because these these things are very topic wise or very wide ranging um, yet and still the overall gist of it is to make a, a cohesive strategy that is going to be sticky to that targeted buying audience thank you thank you so much for sharing that so so I, I think what you're trying to do here is that you're trying to deep dive and understand the target audience a lot more than just doing yes. surface level research. I think most entrepreneurs, they create a customer profile, which might be just surface level. I think you might have more layers to this process, like, you know, maybe quantitative or qualitative process of research. Uh, maybe interviewing people in person, trying to understand, you know, what takes and what kind of content they would be interested in engaging. Stuff like that. Am I am I right in saying those things? Well, a lot of the stuff that um, a lot of the the information for the targeted buying um, buying audience. Actually, if you do a little research, a lot of the stuff's already been done. Um, so what we do is we do pay for quantitative analysis um, of targeted audiences, um, so that we can, you know, have that information at our disposable, um, unless it's, um, a very specific or very niche audience, we will then construct focus groups, um, to obtain, um, uh, more information on that specific, um, audience group. And we let the client know ahead of, ahead of schedule if that's something that we, um, feel is necessary for that makes sense. That makes sense. I I wanted to actually ask you uh, about copywriting because I see yes. a lot of connection with copywriting. So let's talk about copywriting and the role of, of copywriting in effective viral marketing campaigns. So what is the role of copy and does copy contribute towards an effective viral campaign? Now, this is interesting. Um, Copy is very important for a viral campaign. Yet and still, I would have to say that if you want it really viral, you want the rules to be broken. And that is something that is very new um, within the last five to I would say five to ten years um is that the change of copywriting like there used to be rules you just could not do and yes they they they're they're breaking all the rules <laughs> um and that actually makes for viral content when they break the copy rules oh yes could you could you it give us an very example well. maybe Alicia so that I can Maybe relate to this? Do you have an example? In okay. Mind? Um, well, let's just say this. Popeyes made $26 million off a viral Twitter campaign with about every rule bro broken. I think they used gang gang in the, <laughs> in the tweets. Um, yeah, we, we weren't allowed to do that before. <laughs> that was not a thing <laughs> and uh <laughs> that's a whole thing now um you know win for the team by the way um very excited for that team i hope they got such a good bonus um really love engine uh, you know innovative um process being able to make things relatable um and how much that counters everything it countered everything <laughs> it really did um on like you know you have to talk a certain way you have to do a certain way no that's absolutely not true anymore and copyright is someone who is i would say has excellent communication skills 
but like goes to different sections of the city to hang out, like that's a person you really want to hire as a copywriter right now. Um, because the ability to speak within different audience groups within the United States um, is very appealing right now. Um, just for the copywriting ability and how much that copywriting style does go viral. That that is really cool. So copy is an important component, uh, especially along with hashtag, audience research, and many other components which layers to make, uh, you know, an effective viral campaign. So how do entrepreneurs make their copy? You know more relatable do they need to hire the most yeah i would say the most before you can make the copy before you can make the hashtags all that you got to make your stick this all boils down to the same thing over time and time again what are you trying to obtain so if you say to yourself i'm trying to you know because i do like i said i do my stuff a certain way everyone does their stuff a certain way um if they're trying to make absolute sales off of their copy um you know or stuff like that you know good for you and i hope you do i i you know what i mean it just usually isn't the stuff that really goes but if you're trying to pull people into your ecosystem copy is really about almost kind of feeling like would you hang out with me um that's really what it's about now it's changed so much because before it was like you know are you the authority and now that's not so much um the emphasis it's more of i want to read about this particular topic from someone who sounds like they're me And I get that. And that's, it's, it's the difference that we have to our new hurdle. It's a new way of doing things, but it leaves so much opportunity on the table and allows a lot of people who might not have been, you know, asked to the table before to really have a presence there due to their natural ability to handle that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I also remember another thing uh, which you had stated uh, on your last room th this past Sunday. I remember specifically you said going viral does not mean it's always millions and billions. There could be a certain industry, maybe uh, it's just 100,000 people and that can be still be viral. So it's it's very industry specific also, correct? And some industries... Yes, absolutely. And... The reason why I say that a lot of times is because I will talk to manufacturers and they're kind of like, hey, well, you know, I want mine to see my 5.3 million. Hold on. Hold on. You sell through distributors. OK, so you don't want to do any B to C because then you're making more expensive for them to advertise you. It's kind of not what we do. Um. What I then, you know, especially like with within, you know, manufacturers or, or people who have a lower um, buy buy in on population. OK. If I'm selling, I, I sell, I, you know, this I sell social media advertising, I sell system integration work, I sell, you know, business strategy. So. With those areas. You know, it's not like I can go down to the McDonald's and pitch everyone in the McDonald's. It's not a good area for me to go. It's not, you know, where my audience is. You understand? But if I had Tide Pods, <laughs> right, I could go down there and I could pitch that whole McDonald's because generally speaking, most people relate to the fact that they need laundry detergent. So that's the difference on how we're, we're relating to people. Um, you know, how we're, how we're appealing to who our audience is. That manufacturer's audience is distributors. It's only like about 
There's probably about maybe 200 in the whole United States they can work with. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's their core audience, 200. Now, for us to go viral, though, we still have to get the audience of at least, you know, 80 to 90 percent of that audience. And that's a high buy in because everyone's going for that same audience. You understand? So it's really about, you know, definitely still understanding that this content still needs to pull though 80 90 percent of that audience into the ecosystem because if you're not going to buy your way in through the ads you've got to do it virally absolutely that makes total sense now alicia what would happen uh once you go viral you know the things business owners need to do to gear up for the storm ahead what advice would you recommend them well, one of the things that we do is we make sure that they're able to be scalable before we even get involved. Um, here's the deal. If your business systems are um, overloaded as is, once once the stuff starts to kick in um, and we actually make viral content, we do campaigns to elicit some stuff as well. So that's a, a um, some different work than just the viral content. Um but when you're actually, you know, putting this stuff out, you're, you should have a return on your investment because you have a wide enough swath um, to establish, you know, different links, different presence all over the place. So it should be a wide enough. You got to, when you're rolling out this content, you it should be several platforms deep um, to say the least. And in different ways, different, you know, A-B testing along the, the, the shot. In that, before we get, um, we set out any strategy, we have an estimated amount of people that it will serve, an estimated percentage that will accept, and an estimated percentage in which will, in long-term accept. So basically, after the ninth time they see it, then, you know, we'll get this many more type of thing. Um, we do include email campaigns in our work, so um, that kind of um, goes with that, um, which is a real high yield. So what ends up happening is is that once we gauge the the viral width that it's supposed to yield, we then prepare them, okay, what is your system able to do? Is this something that they can, you know, we have a, an automated fulfillment system. Do we have a manual, um, or do we have a manual fulfillment system? If you got 200 orders tonight, are you able to handle it? These are things that we have to talk off, uh, talk about after the viral content strategy is accepted with the client to make sure that they have systems in place to handle it. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. If if you want to go viral, but if you don't have uh, the necessary things to scale and grow and handle that kind of uh, request, there's no point in creating uh, anything that would be viral. So, I mean, everybody expects all businesses want to grow and scale, but, you know, sometimes some people are not just ready. And, they may Absol not and absolutely. And the other thing, too, is that sometimes some people have um, magic in their brand. And what I mean by that is that they have like, they have like a pebble in their shoe, right? And sometimes it just takes someone to reverse engineer the brand. And you can find that there is a pebble in their shoe and that's an easily fixable issue. And we fix that issue and boom, explosive sales, you know, <laughs> like it's, um, Sometimes it's just that it might be a pebble in the branding, in the messaging. You know what I mean? Um, that they're, you know, and they're not looking at because maybe they didn't take a psychological um, look at the back end of the consumer before. And so, you know, sometimes when you look at it from more of a psychological appeal, um, you tend to reveal different types of um analytics and data as a result absolutely absolutely now i'm just guessing that you know once you start pulling this off 
I mean, most businesses who does not enjoy, you know, cash flow, right? So what would happen, you know, post viral success? You know, how would they stay relevant, continue the same momentum of sales, stuff like that? What would be your advice there? You know, how would you handle that? Well, we keep it hot. Um, <laughs> if you're winning, you do not let it go. Um, so what we do is pretty much like oh, for our clients, we have a um, we have a combined rate. So what's going to happen is is that if we notice, okay, this piece is going. All right, great. So we have different con captions and stuff like that. That's running through testing, A-B testing. So that's also going and, and proceeding on. So you have multiple versions of the same viral content. So you can, you have that already in place in the background to keep it hot. Okay. But at the same time, we're analyzing the data to see, okay, where are people, you know, jumping off, where are they jumping on? Um, you know, are we seeing comments at certain, you know, points within um, the content and then really looking at that data to say, OK, we need to focus on this type of data and look at making more viral content pieces based on the success of that viral content. Um, and we do that within like 72 hours. So that's just something that we that's that's part of what we do. So once you have the traction, there is no point letting it go. You should, you know, keep adding more oil to the fire. <laughs> Let it grind more. And exactly. <laughs> until it burns out. Um, and, and really at that point in time, um, you know, there's what I call fire uh, keepers and there's new fire starters. Okay. You should be looking at viral content in both ways. The fire keepers are those that maintain the fire and the emblem and the flame of the viral content that you've already set through. They're not to be viral. They're just to keep it up. Okay. The vir fire starters are new viral content that appeals to the same targeted audience and is relatable or, you know, whichever way it worked, whether it was entertainment that worked or whether it was relation, relatable content that worked or whatever piece worked, you want to then focus on creating another viral piece, different topic that pulls them in on something else. Because you can't keep, you want to, you want to make new spokes with the ecosystem to make it more sticky. So the more topics you talk about that they like, the more they'll keep coming back for more information. I think the best advice which you're giving me is that at some point, Alicia, uh, what you're saying is that anybody's business can go through like a fire storm, you know, being viral. And it's always advisable that, you know, you have a fair sense of understanding how to handle that heat. It's good to be prepared just in case, you know, if that is expected to hit you, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, then, and and on top of it, it's like kind of like, because like I said, you work on in, in two folds. You should always be looking for the next innovative piece, right? <laughs> That's what we do. Um, and really kind of looking at not just the innovative piece um, based off of the information you want to offer the industry, but what's happening in the industry that you can get a piece off of? That's something to be understanding as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to actually, you know, get your advice on, uh, you know, what would be some of the tools uh, which you would probably recommend to the audience or you personally use uh, for managing a viral marketing campaign. And we would be starting Q&A after this question. So if anybody is interested in coming up, I have sent out invitations. Uh, feel free to come up and uh, ask Alicia some questions about viral content uh, marketing. Go ahead, Alicia. Okay. Well, I I can uh, start off by saying that um, one of the big things that I do um, recommend is that when you're picking out your CRM, your customer relationship management software, it's very important to really focus on what information are they able to offer you about the actions of potential clients. 
So I make sure that I use CRMs that have heat sinks that can tell me like, you know, where on the page did they click? Um, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, the, that kind of information is very important when you are making viral content because over time as you in it as you you know kind of relate to your audience you'll start to see what makes them tick what they enjoy what they're going to click on what they're going to like um and it, it you know it does take a little bit of time but a year's knowledge is very effective and really you know really honing in highly effective campaigns um over time and that's just because you've you've looked at the content that you have released and you've seen where you know they like they, they like this schedule link and so you end up using the same wording and capitalize the s <laughs> because for whatever reason when you capitalize the s it goes um you know stuff like that that's it's it's what you end up doing with the the heat sink um uh, CRM and really you're, you're with viral content. The emphasis cannot be stronger on what people do. Um, you, the data of what people do and what people react to is the pretty much the core of making that, um, viral content that's going to be accepted by them in the manner in which they like it. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's actually welcome Chi. Uh, Chi's a close friend of mine. Thank you so much for joining the stage, Chi. Do you have a question or is there anything you'd like to contribute to this conversation? Uh, Chi, I think you're on mute. Is it, am I there now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice Yay! to hear you. <laughs> Hello, Jason, and it is Alicia, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. So I heard you say something in regards to, um, you know, depending on, you know, the followers or, you know, buying into the ads. Can you go a little bit more into depth about that piece of it? Yes. So we don't... Um... We don't focus any of our strategies with any paid advertising. And one of the reasons why is because we like to find the true measure of a brand's integrity without any additional avenue. It's almost like, you know, uh, if you want someone to model for you, but you want them to take off the wig and everything <laughs> beforehand, um, no additives so that you can see the steam by itself. It's very important um, in designing viral content to understand where the integrity of the brand is without any paid advertising so that you can then draw for the numbers that you're going to need to make the content itself viral without advertising. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I, I probably need to rewind and listen to the beginning of this to fully understand, you know, your um, your role and what exactly you're doing. But I will say that I don't have any paid advertisement. And my daughter and I, we got over like a million views on this one video. However, mm -hmm. now it seems like they're trying to block <laughs> our video um because of the rights of it and i'm like but i used the music right from the app so i'm confused what's going on is it because of the fact that nobody you know picked picked us up I, I don't know like i was just really confused by that um that actually started happening to a lot of people this year um i know even me personally i think i lost about five videos this year and same thing I chose the music from the app. Um, what happens is, is that I think that what, what's going, what happened was that the original like marketer of the music didn't have the license. Yeah. Absolutely. And absolutely. so it's because now, of yeah, it was like the license got switched up 
um, and got a new creator or new owner. And then, then, then you're, <laughs> unfortunately a lot for a lot of us, we chose music that everyone chose. So it's like, you know, there's 2 million <laughs> videos down now, um, due to this. So I think that a lot of that happened this year. Um, but it went viral. So guess what? I would take it down, take the music off and redo it. It'll go viral again. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, and you know, and that's, it's, the, it's, it's, it's really the truth though. The, you know, usually content that's, a, that gains a large acceptance, just put it, just, you know, um, if you get a large acceptance before you're going to get a large acceptance again. Um, and as a matter of fact, choose different music and redo it. That's more popular now. Yeah. Um, I, but the, the song, the dance was to the song and oh, even the artist came saying. in and liked it, like complimented and stuff. So I'm just, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. I feel like, I don't know whether I should buy, whether I should not. And I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm, I feel like I'm waiting to get into the double Dutch, you know, it's moving, but it's like, okay, which way do I go? Which way do I go? So thank you so oh, much. Oh, I see what you're saying as far as, yeah, the, when it's a, a viral piece such as that, um, that's a different level in which to materialize off of. Okay. Um, if you, you should be monetizing that, um, that particular video by putting in links, um, in the subject field, things that nature, um, to utilize those, whatever you're going to sell, sell it, but put it in the links make a very long description. Okay. And make sure you also put, uh, the little emoticons, things that nature, make sure you use them as well and monetize that post. Because when you have something like that, you know, you, I still say what I originally said was repost it. Um, and I'm not saying that you take down the post you have now, keep that up. But repost, uh, it's the same video though. It's a, it's a music video, huh? Yeah, maybe use another filter. <laughs> I would do another video. <laughs> I would do it. I would just do another video, um, and try to do something a little bit more, whatever the the newest is. Unfortunately for me, I'm terrible with this stuff. I don't even try to get in the game because I already know I'm not. <laughs> I'm not equipped to play. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my personal yeah, advice no. is G, that, you know, go for copyright free songs. It's, it's, yeah. you get licensed. Yeah, but you know what? They, that changes too. You choose copyright free songs and they come back later and they had, yeah, it, it, it really, um, it really is hard. The other thing you can do is you can utilize, hmm, check on TikTok because if you load the song onto TikTok, they're not hitting people with the copyright that's going on with uh, Instagram, just FYI. Well, the only time I got close to being viral on TikTok, I think I maybe got 60,000 likes or something, but, um, oh, it was 10,000 likes, 60,000 60, views. And yeah, that was the last time that ever went that way. Uh, so <laughs> it's, yeah. I keep trying and I'll just keep on trying, keep on plugging in and using some of the good, um, information that you have provided with us today and definitely plugging that in to see if in fact things change and make the algorithm swing my way. Yeah. Yeah. One thing about TikTok, there's a powerful, um, hashtag it's, um, uh, hashtag F Y P. I don't even know what it is to be honest with you. I just know that if you put that on there, it does for your help. page for your, what page. is it? FYP stands for for your page. Okay. Yeah. So 
um, that FYP, that just adding that simple three character hashtag does assist. Um, and then just look at your hashtags on what that you're choosing and make sure you're getting bigger ones. So, you know, you want to have some core ones, of course, maybe for your first like five, but make sure they're doing a lot. You want things that are like, you know, a hundred million things that nature, really a lot of searches. Um, and then use secondaries underneath that, that are a little bit more defined and specific to who would laugh or who would enjoy the content you're looking for. Those are some great tips, Alicia. We also have somebody on LinkedIn. His name is Paris. So, Chi, do you have a follow-up question before we move to Paris? Chi? I oh, okay. No worries. I was like, did I, did I drop everybody? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I have walked away. I was listening, but I, I walked away. Um, no worries. For me, I have done that. And I've, I've seen, you know, it go up and down. You know, for instance, um, when I used VIP last year, VIP, hashtag VIP, it was like I got a whole bunch of hits. And then after a while, it was just like, it just went dead. It went cold. Um, there were a couple different ones that I used last year that it seemed like, you know, I would attract the masses and then it was, it, it's not working this year. <laughs> so now, it's always um, trying to One other know. thing to recommend to you, have you ever used a program called hashtag generator? I've seen the ad for it. I never actually um, downloaded the app. The app is not bad, um, and it probably will help you right now because so many people use it now. It's got a lot of information, and um, what it does, what it can do, is help you with the fresh tags that are winning on TikTok because TikTok's a whole new game, and anyone can win it. And it really boils down to that content and that hashtag. So, um, you know, something to consider with TikTok, because even though you don't need to, you might want to make stuff in TikTok, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it's going to go. Like you might make it in TikTok and, and, and you have great views there, but it actually goes better on Instagram, even though you made it on TikTok. It's very interesting how it goes down. Um, so something to consider, just make sure that when you're making your content, reveal it multi-channel because no matter, and even your TikTok, take your TikTok video, take the link, put it on Twitter. That's a great advice. Chi, does that answer all your questions? We have another user from LinkedIn who wants to ask another question. Do you have a, a follow-up question before I proceed? <laughs> I all good. Thank you so much. I yeah. Anything, and I followed you. I hope to look forward to speaking with you more. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Chief. Please stay on. Uh, stay on the stage and let me circle to Paris. Paris, uh, I hope uh, you're, uh, you can hear us. There's a lot of background noise. Can you move to somewhere which is a little more quieter if you can? Uh, give me a minute. Uh, just one second. Okay. All right. So while we are actually waiting, I'm just going to play a song. Okay. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> okay, Paris. So go ahead. Cool. Uh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Is uh, there anything you'd like uh, to contribute to this conversation? Yes. Uh, so I had a question from Alicia. Um, so I've, I've started my own uh, firm uh, recently and... Uh, was previously working with Amazon, so just wanted to understand regarding creating viral content because in today's age, well, no matter what you're doing, even if it is tech, so we are a pure tech firm, uh, but even for us, we have to make uh, use of viral media more so from YouTube and TikToks of the world for us, uh, for us to propagate what we want to do to the wider audience. Just wanted to understand from you, Alicia. How, how do how do you see um, 
TikTok or YouTube's of the world being of use for a B two B firm like us? Okay, that's a great question. I actually to handle technology firms, um, so I I will explain what we our process is with um, technology firms. First and foremost, technology firms have to understand like everything has got to be like futuristic. <laughs> um, futuristic videos, um, really like, you know, un like, like it, it should look like it came out of the movie alien of some sort. Um, and that seems to be like one of the things that, that does, um, affect and does well for technology. Okay. The one thing I will tell you is this though, um, where I think a lot of times technology firms go bad is, you know, no one's going to watch these cartoons all day about your firm. Okay. Um, it's not even that the, like the explainer videos are cool. Um, but they're not viral content. Viral content is in, is actually, um, something that's a little bit more relatable. Nobody looks like these crayon figures. So that it's something that, you know, you can't think that that's going to go viral. I'll tell you what will go viral though. Like, you know, somehow, um, someone's up writing code. Okay. And they, they're on their 1700 rendition of the same code. And here you are flying in with the spaceship. And you beam down into the room and hand them Mercado, <laughs> right? Something like, you know, this, this is what you have to think about. This is viral content. That's what's going to be shared. They're definitely not going to share the explainer video though. That's the difference. They want a movie. So, uh, so I, I, I understand all of, all of that, Alicia. So, uh, uh, just a small follow-up uh, on that is um, for us to use TikTok effectively. How how do how do we position us compared to everyone out there? Is uh is there something that you would want me specifically me being the founder of the firm to keep in mind while we propagate or we create these viral content? in TikTok and YouTube uh, of the world. Okay, so your technology, I'm going to keep it very honest and frank with you. Less money on the TikTok, more money on the YouTube. Okay? TikTok is for is for a different audience. You're always still going to sell more of your audience on LinkedIn and YouTube. That's just how it goes. Um, and that's where technology really resides. Um, it, for you, viral means your targeted buying audience pretty much on LinkedIn. Um, and then you want to basically get their information from LinkedIn the email and keep positioning until they tell you to stop <laughs> um but yeah. that's where your market is it you're not gonna have a lot of people people don't go to tiktok to look for anything that's pretty much technology they go to tiktok to get away from the technology so they can see something simple minded so Technology is not going to be your best thing there. The only thing that you can do is have a viral video that's going to pull people into your ecosystem. You understand that? Got it. Got it. All right. If we make something entertaining, Alicia, do you think there is a chances of, you know, things working out? Well, the we could you can make something entertaining. Um but here's the thing, where is that entertainment going to yield? You're not, there's a large amount of people on TikTok, but there's not a large amount of people of on TikTok that are in the technology world. 
Why? Because TikTok has security issues. So depending on who your target audience is for your technology, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you would look for a bunch of cyber security specialists on TikTok. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that's why I say not TikTok um, for technology. But if, say, for instance, you had a software that related to the average consumer, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you were selling food or something? Oh, yeah, that, absolutely. If you can deliver all over and you got, you know, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, TikTok's your, your, your place. Domino's can do very, very well on TikTok. Do you have a follow-up question, Paris, before we move on to the next uh, person on stage? Paris? Yeah, I, I, I'm done, Jason. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for that. Okay, so we have another. Uh, we have somebody on Clubhouse. His name is Yaya. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, Jason, you're pronouncing it right. <laughs> thank you so it's much. Pleasure to meet you. It's pleasure to meet you too, sir. Uh, do you have a question? Is there anything you'd like to contribute to this conversation? Um, I don't have a question, but um, I would. Um, I've been. Um, I met Alicia in 2013 or so um, in a consulting opportunity um, way back in Pennsylvania. So um, this would seeing her her here and um, um, talking so nicely about um, the viral content and this information is um, extremely encouraging to me. And um, best of luck, Alicia. And it has been a pleasure um, enjoying this. Um, ride of um, friendship over the years so thank you thank you yeah yeah it was great to hear that you were on the on the call i knew who it was as soon as you said your name i thank you for your support always and i should say that's the most coolest name i have heard very very <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much uh for those compliments to my guests i also have an, uh, another good friend thomas Condal from Australia, uh, who has joined our conversation on LinkedIn. Uh, do you have a question, Thomas, for Alicia, or anything you'd like to contribute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hi, Alicia. <laughs> my name's... Sorry, that's a, my attempt at Australian humor. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, my name's uh, Tom Condal, uh, but Thomas, if you want to uh, be formal. Um, look, I, I didn't really have a question as such, although I guess a statement more. Um, I'm, uh, I'm more of the older dinosaur variety, so I'm not huge on technology, but I have a 16-year-old son who probably teaches me more than I can teach myself. Um, and he loves TikTok and he loves Snapchat and I don't understand it, but he says he does 4 million snaps in in about six months, whatever that means. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm 59, he's 16. So, um, but he loves technology and he loves, um, TikTok, um, and he loves media. So one day he might be, a, you know, a successful, uh, media person, but, uh, it's funny. I was just talking to him, uh, a few hours ago. And he's asleep now, but I'm not because I don't really sleep, even though it's 4.14 a.m. in Melbourne. Um, oh, but wow. Yeah, that's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm being stupid. But, yeah, no, just a statement to say, look, I'm really interested in how things go viral. And uh, I, I spoke to a lady who runs a studio in, uh, in my suburb here in Melbourne, and she... Uh, mm -hmm. She told me that she posted something and it got 4 million hits and it was something stupid. It was her father-in-law spilling paint in her studio. And I guess... Um, oh, great content. It's weird, it, it's, it's weird isn't it? Like she, you can put all the intellectual <laughs> stuff and you can, and you can say, I'm a, I've done an MBA and I've done this and, you know, I'm really important. But uh, she got... 
four million hits from her father-in-law. I don't know whether it was accidental or it was intentional, but uh, he spilt paint and it was filmed and then she stuck it on whatever media, social media she used. Uh, maybe it was uh, Instagram. And, yeah, she got the hits. So I guess in summary you get hits and misses and maybe yes, you get hits that's from actually, stupid things. Her themes. content couldn't have been better, to be honest with you. Like if you're a business owner and you can get something like that, like, someone doing something funny or whatever, or like in tech, when we used to, I, I remember a time I, I, well, my boss went away for vacation and we came back. I had tinfoiled his entire operation down to the pens, <laughs> the seat, <Bruh. laughs> everything, you we, know, this kind yeah, of stuff. Me. Yeah, exactly. That's the stuff that goes viral though, but it's relatable to a buying audience. So very effective and uh, congratulations to her. Yeah. And she's, she's a young girl and she's um, very uh, enthusiastic about her. She, she's, you know, she's opened up this studio in, uh, in Hampton, which is a suburb uh, in Melbourne, not the Hamptons in, uh, in Long Island, but, um, and she, um, yeah, she's a photographer and she, uh, she's got a lot of energy and I think she'll, she'll do well. And she's got a, a good name, Charlotte, which is, you know, kind of trendy in Australia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I would have to agree. She, um, yeah, she's, she's built the paint and, uh, she's got the followers. So I think she'll, she'll, she'll do well. And look how beautiful that is. She's probably mad at her dad and he probably made all this money. So, you know, it, it, it's <laughs> wonderful when things <laughs> things like that happen. Um, and you can celebrate those relatable pieces that happen and really transition them into to making some money. Yeah, I don't know who whose mic was echoing, so I tried to mute both. So I don't know where it's coming from, but I can hear a back feed while recording. Okay, but but Thomas, uh, I think I think it was awesome, and I think it's a great tip to whoever who is listening, who has a studio. I think maybe you want to spill some paint and record it. You never know; you can get four <laughs> million. It's <laughs> it's it's a great tip. <laughs> you don't have to point Absolutely. and dance. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's good. It's it, she she's taken a risk. You know, uh, post COVID, a lot of industry is. Uh, decimated you know a lot of businesses have shut down um in melbourne and uh especially in the small strip shopping areas um and she's you know she's paying a lot of rent for a um for a business and uh she's young and you know obviously her mum's helping her out as parents do um and yeah the father helped out by spilling the paint <laughs> <laughs> whatever so what, just, whatever contribution we can make <laughs> i'm just spilling i'm just spilling the beans telling you this story <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much and, and good luck uh, alicia thank you so much take care tom thank you awesome awesome it's always nice to hear from you thomas so i appreciate you being here i have some rapid fire questions before we move to the business side of things so let me get that sound effect ready all right so rapid fire questions what is your proudest accomplishment alicia well my proudest accomplishment is my son and um he you know to me uh I raised my child, um, his father and I were scheduled to be married. And then unfortunately he died when I was six months pregnant. Um, and I raised him my entire life by myself and, you know, a lot to do with why I became an entrepreneur and things that nature related to my son. And he wanted me to get him off the bus. And so I had to figure out a way to get him off the bus and keeping a business and multiple businesses was how I did that. 
and now he's 24, he's married, you know, he lives a pretty good life in Florida, though they just went through a hurricane. Um, you know, I'm proud of the fact that he understood, you know, that, that our lives is about, you know, creating a life with someone that we love and creating a family, you know, and, you know, they, a lot of people have always said that, you know, children who are raised by single moms don't get married. And I'm like, "Ah, no, that's not true. I, you know, and I'm, I'm very proud of the choices he makes in his life. So he, for him, like a lot of the stuff I went through and a lot of stuff I had to do, um, to do this life was worth it. So that's my proudest achievement. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss, but I love the fact that you were able to raise him, take care of him, and he's married and he's 24, so I want to ask you a question about him. So what is your son's favorite game or sports he likes to watch or play? Well, right now, he's in the process of teaching himself uh, the electric guitar, which... He's doing very well with. Um, oh, that's super cool. He like documented his whole process, and he's doing that now. Um, and he's also um, working towards uh, doing something with HVAC um, and doing that as a business choice. So he has some training he has to do for the next year, and then um, he'll be going into that as well. That is super cool. Let me ask you a personal question, Alicia. So if money was not an object, what would you do all day? If money wasn't an object, I'd hike the world. I'm an avid hiker. Oh, nice. Anywhere in um, specific? No. I mean, literally, private islands better. Like not bar, <laughs> not purchased on the on the market. I'm with it. <laughs> uh, that's that's me. I I like to see what no one else has seen. That's you know. Yeah, lovely, lovely. I want to actually ask this question to Chi and other people on stage because I I, I think it's a funny question. So so Chi, I don't know if you're there, but if I were to ask you the same question, if money was no object, what would you do all day? G. I would um, continuously make people smile, um, be a a performer, you know, to bring joy and to bring love and peace to people. Um, while I am also like Alicia, listen, take me to the furthest place away from everybody, even though I want to <laughs> <have> people. <laughs> I want to be on an island where I can find my peace and recharge and rejuvenate. That is lovely. I appreciate you sharing that, Chi. Uh, yeah, yeah. What? How about you, sir? What? Uh, if money was no object, what would you do all day? Most probably, I'd teach. Um, I believe it's nice to transfer the skill you have to the next. And I think that would be the best thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where I was getting this back feed, Alicia. Maybe it's coming from your mic. So, so yeah, yeah, you said uh, you will teach, right? If I heard that right. That's true. That's what I said. Much love to you, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that. Let me ask my friend Thomas from Australia. Tom, what would you do if money was not an object? Uh, Jason, that's the sixty-four million dollar question. <laughs> but if 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 I had sixty-four million dollars, um, I would, I think I'd continue doing what I'm doing because I actually like what I'm doing. Um, I I like connecting and I like communication and I like helping people. And I like helping people um, I don't know I, I guess I just like understanding people and understanding what drives people um, and I think 
I, I, I like, I try to like authenticity. So I think, you know, the world's full of different people, obviously. And, and I think a lot of people are a bit afraid to be authentic. And, you know, I really, um, really appreciated, you know, Alicia, you know, telling us about, you know, her background story, because I think it takes a lot of, um, you know, it takes a lot of uh, courage to to tell people's stories uh, or, or your own story, um, no matter how hard it is. And, you know, everyone's got a story and I think um, it's, it's, we should share more of them because if you share your story, it might help someone else who's going through a similar thing. So in terms of activity, I don't want to go to a private island. Um, I like golf and I, I'm lucky enough to play in a really nice golf course here in Melbourne. Um, so I guess that's my private island. But because I'm a bit, got a few injuries, you know, I couldn't play seven days a week, even if I had 64, mo- 64 million Australian or American dollars. So I'd probably pay golf twice a week um, and I'd probably work maybe three days a week and then I'd probably work in the garden the other day and then I'd, I'd help, you know, my son uh, get good grades so he can do whatever he wants to do in, once he leaves uh, school. Thanks. That, that is awesome, Thomas. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And and people who are actually listening to us uh, live on LinkedIn and Clubhouse, I've pinned the link uh, to Alicia's website. is SAS, S-A-A-S, Y for Yankee, strategy.com. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to Alicia, you know, book a consultation call, perhaps, you know, check with her as to what her expertise is and what how she can help your business out please reach out to Alicia. I actually was very fascinated with something which I saw uh, on the on, on Alicia's LinkedIn profile. It's about three specific uh, projects which her business was really working on. So, so Alicia, you know that thing which I'm going to ask you, right? Because I mentioned it in the beginning. So could you help us understand these projects which you are closely working on? The, the first one is Talk to Me Nicely. Second is Childhood Interrupted. And the third one is School on Fire. Would you mind giving our audience as to what exactly is this? How are you trying to help people with this application? Yeah, Alicia, I, I think you're on mute. Alicia. Oh, oh welcome okay. back. Am welcome I good back. now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Okay. So um, the three projects are, these are all social software programs. And basically, um, they serve um, a usefulness across the globe. So the first the one is Talk to Me Nicely. Talk to me nicely is in regards to that toxic boss you had who's been at the company for 15 years, who's about to be walked out by HR any second, okay? And um, yet and still, they've invested 15 years in him. Um, He's not going to be able to work for anybody, okay, until he changes. So what we decided to do was build a program that would be based in the metaverse, And it would literally teach them and reprogram them to learn how to talk to people nicely. To change the toxicity within themselves so they can see themselves and feel what it's like to hear their words back at them. And to see in the faces of their co-workers what happens when they say and talk the way they talk. And they'll be able to replay it to the way they should talk. And then they can see the difference in the reactions in the people. So these are, um, this is a program to reprogram toxic managers to regain the value of their employment with these companies for so many years. Um, And 
sometimes people just want a way out. And if the company's going to pay for them, you know, they'll buy in a lot easier. So that's kind of um, an area of opportunity we saw, with, it, especially within the tech industry, um, a lot of toxicity, humongous toxicity. And so therefore, you know, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of consultants been hired to try to deal with this, this sort of thing. I think the, you know, teaching people and letting them see themselves in true formation allows them to change their behavior. And that's kind of what we're, um, trying to build with the talk, uh, to me nicely. Um, the second one is childhood interrupted. Is that correct? That you have yes. down there? Okay, so Childhood Interrupted is basically a platform that will allow video statements from children about abuses that they're going through. Um, this way that they have, they don't have to sit there and say, oh, well, we need the video of the child or we need to talk to the child before we remove or stuff like that with egregious things. They'll be able to move with a little bit more tactful and speed because they have the video. And um, it will be an app that records it. Once the video is recorded, it'll send it to um, law enforcement, or law, excuse me, not law enforcement, but actually the Department of Children's Services in that area. And, and, and the, the agencies themselves vary in um, the actual name of the, of the actual agency per area. Um, but the children's service that would be relative to the area that the, the um, the child left the video message is pretty much who's going to get called. They in turn then can work with your school and other services to, you know, get more information and to remove if necessary right away, or um, at least be alerted and noted that they were alerted of um, the, the child's um, complaint. And uh, the third one that we're working on is called um, School, School on, on Fire. fire. Mm -hmm. And School on Fire is really about, um, there's an incident at the school. Um, it pretty much puts your child on a heat sink. You'll know where the child is and you'll know where the incident, the actual disturber is. If there's an on-person shooter, you'll be able to see on a heat sink within the mat within the school itself as to where your child currently is located, where the, the, uh, action is. So, you know, if they're a couple classrooms down and there's an adjoining room, you can, um, give your, uh, child instructions on how to get out, um, uh, to safety. You can also then also look at opportunities if you need to, to get on there, to get your kid out. Because, uh, in light of some of the, um, the situations with, um, I think it's called Elvad, uh, U V A L D E, um, Texas, when they had that shooting, um, we wanted to, um, create something that would give parents another way instead of just sitting there, you know, being stuck, um, when police aren't there, you know, at the time to really assist them. So there's that. <laughs> awesome awesome i personally feel all these three things are very very important it's really solving a specific problem so along with the viral marketing campaign content which you just heard from my guest alicia she also helps uh, to you know make these applications and uh, you know these things which generally does help people uh, as you heard from her if you want to get more information please reach out to alicia uh, she should be able to give you more details on how to go about these things. I want to actually ask you uh, about the business side of things, although we have an overview. So do you have any upcoming events or promotions, anything you like to promote on our show today? And it can be even speaking engagements. Well, we're currently doing um, with our new um, focus within social media. Um, that's one area of um uh, that has really been taking off. So kind of like our front runner right now. Um, and we've put together a program in which we combine social media management, uh, LinkedIn automation and HubSpot um, uh, management in such as um, email sequences um, and, uh, you know, 
email um, campaigns, things of that nature. Um, we do the entire gamut, and we're doing this for an introductory price of only 800 So um, if you do go to our website, um, Sassy, um, Sassy Social, or excuse me, um, SassyStrategy.com, and we just spell it S-A-A-S-E <laughs> Strategy.com. Um, if you do go over there and you choose Sassy Social, you'll see our different um, pricing for our um, social media and our, like I said, the new one with the LinkedIn automation and HubSpot together rolled in with social media. That's our um, that's our newest package. It's something that we're really trying out. We use a lot of automation within our processes, so we're able to do a little bit more than maybe um, the average uh, social media agency. That is awesome. So the website, uh, S-A-A-S-Y strategy.com. It's, it will mm -hmm. be on my show notes as well as LinkedIn and Clubhouse, wherever you find. You should be able to find this detail. Is that the best possible way how people can reach out to you or is there another medium? Um, you can also reach us um, at LinkedIn. I did put my LinkedIn um uh, on chat link yeah. in there, mm -hmm. which is um, basically just to know strategy, Alicia, that's, <laughs> that's it. Um, and then also, um, we are, I would say, stay, um, stay abreast. We're going to be adding some, um, serious, some actual donation links, um, for the software in the next, um, uh, coming month. Uh, we're actually going to really be starting that in the, for December 1st, um, to, to get things a little bit more positioned as the so the software will start to be in production in January, 2023. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up the show for today, Alicia? Well, one thing I just want to leave off with saying is this, you know, I, I, viral content can be created by anyone. And it truly is, a, you know, something to, to look for just, if you want to do viral content, do a search in Google viral content and look at ways in which you can do that or hire someone who does it. It's one of two ways. You don't have to go without it. Um, you can get it done. So, you know, if you're looking for that cheaper buy-in, the one where you don't have to spend, you know, all your money with Google forever on a contract, um, you know, viral content is definitely a, a, a better positioning and it pulls in the ecosystem you want, not just whoever did the search. So something can consider longevity wise. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, on that note, uh, guys, I, I want to pause today's conversation. See you guys next week. So next week, I have a very awesome guest. So just in case if you're on Clubhouse, uh, you see Sarah. Sarah is a close friend of mine from Thailand. And uh, she's actually going to speak about her life story. Uh, like, you know, similar to the conversation which Melissa had on my show. So we're going to get to know her, her background, childhood and everything. It's going to be amazing. I can promise you that she's a very, very close friend. And her story is actually, you know, which everybody will get inspired after listening. So I would highly encourage you to join our conversation live on 12th of October at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you once again, Alicia, for being a part of today's conversation. It's been an amazing conversation. I learned quite a lot. I have a lot of notes on viral uh, marketing campaign and if i do get any sort of leads uh, i would be happy to send them over to you so that you can help them out so i appreciate this very oh very thank you and likewise i appreciate the fact that you do brand identity absolutely <laughs> absolutely I, I would greatly appreciate that too so you guys take care of yourself have a lovely morning evening afternoon good night wherever you are in the world please take care of yourself thank you so much thank you as well take thank care thank you Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.